The engineering and product manager collaboration is one of the most important collaborations on the team to ship products that people love. So here are eight tips on working with engineers that are going to supercharge your collaboration and build a high performing team. Sometimes working as a product manager with engineers can be difficult. You sometimes kind of come from separate worlds unless you as a product manager had a computer science background or were a developer in the past. So sometimes your engineer will say something technical and just nod along, pretend like you know what that person's talking about, but you don't know what's going on. And you're too scared to say something because you don't want to look stupid. Or what about those times when engineers are talking to each other, you're in the group and they come up with some joke and then you fake laugh. <laughs> but you don't know what's going on. Well, I can't help you much when they make nerdy jokes, but I will give you eight tips on how to better work with engineers. Starting with tip number one, which is be willing to learn technical concepts. Understand key engineering concepts will go a long way in helping you have a fluid conversation with engineers back and forth and translating requirements, basically features into how you actually build them. And it can help your team move faster if you understand you as the product manager, understand the lingo that they're using, the processes it takes in order to build something because it could help you understand, well, if I need to build something quickly, what fat can I trim out? And I'm not just talking about software engineering concepts. For example, I was on a team where we were working with telecom companies and hence I had to get technical on network engineering. So how can you do this? A, try to understand some basic computer engineering concepts. Take some 101 classes on Coursera or look up some YouTube videos. B, do some basic coding so you understand the processes engineers go to in order to ship products. C, learn some system design. You don't have to be an expert at it, but it is important to know the concepts and trade-offs. So knowing things like how do you scale a system, how do you ensure when you fetch data that that can happen faster? How do you make sure you don't lose data? These are things that as product managers, you should also be thinking of because they do affect the experience. Lastly, don't be afraid to pull an engineer aside and ask them questions. Most of them, or the ones that I've worked with, have always been super helpful in sharing knowledge. So don't be afraid to ask. The second tip is to align with engineers on problems and don't be overly prescriptive about the solutions all the time. I actually heard her this from a director of engineering at my company. And when he told me, I was like, that's so true. I mean, engineers are incredibly smart and they're really good problem solvers. So with engineers and especially with senior engineers, make sure that they understand the problem more importantly than the solutions, because if they fall in love with the problem, they will be inspired to solve it in ways that you did not even or can even imagine. And on top of this, this is really going to motivate your engineers. Engineers really like solving problems and they like taking things or matters into their own hands and coming up with ideas and interesting fixes. And by getting them excited, that'll help things move faster along and you'll just get more creativity from your engineers. Tip number three is to limit processes to only the necessary ones. I was on a team where the engineers hated any process. For example, I would ask for deadlines or timelines. They'd be like, nope. So I get a general sense engineers do not love processes. I mean, I was probably on a team that was a bit more extreme, but in general, keep processes to a minimum. Don't create all this overhead and admin work for engineers to jump through hoops that are gonna get in the way of them solving problems, coding, and doing the key engineering functions. And not every engineer, instead a lot of engineers, hate being stuck in meetings. So limit the number of meetings that they have to attend or chunk meetings. So if you have to have meetings, have them all in one two hour slot or have them all in one day. And definitely don't Swiss cheese their calendar because for engineers to do the work that they do, they need a chunk of time so constantly having 30 minutes and then being interrupted and then having another 30 minutes just does not work to build things. And what you might do here is to actually ask engineers what processes would they improve or actually include to improve their workflow. 
Sometimes processes on a team are not ideal and a lot of times engineers are the brunt of it. And once they feel resentful, you're gonna have trouble retaining your engineers some of the most valuable people on the team. So make sure you're constantly clearing out what I call process debt. You know how sometimes you have certain meetings and it's meetings that you've had for a very long time, but they've stopped being useful and you haven't taken the time to ask yourself, like, should we just cancel this meeting? So that's what I call process debt. You want to get rid of process debt, similar to technical debt. Comment below if you've worked with engineers and what struggles that you have come face to face with when working with them. Tip number four is to prioritize ruthlessly. Engineering tasks can balloon up really quickly. And hence, if you're not ruthless with your prioritization of what actually needs to be built, most times your aim for your timeline is probably going to be pushed back and back. With engineering, there's always things that come up that push the date further and further. So if you can get good at prioritizing what requirements are P1s or priority number one versus priority number two, priority number three, you'll do a better job at not putting your product at risk. And that way you have a plan B when they say, oh, well, this is going to take much longer than we thought. Then you cut all your P2s and P3s and just focus ruthlessly on the P1s, the priority number ones. Or even within priority number one, you've already stacked rank of the five priority number ones, which is priority zero, which, which ranks number one, two, three. Tip number five is to engage engineers early. Engineers should not be invited when requirements get sussed out completely. And that actually happens often at companies where engineers are seen as a resource and we are really not leveraging their best abilities. Because here, if you can get an engineer obsessed with the problem, they will find ways to solve it that you can't even imagine. And we talked about this above. So get engineers to come to the user research sessions, get them to be a center of the brainstorming sessions. When you are discussing strategy, make sure they are there. Obviously all while keeping a balance on how many meetings you invite them to. Tip number six is to identify hard problems. If you've worked with engineers before, you know engineers love hard problems and sometimes to their detriment because they will go solve a really hard problem when there was an easier way to solve that problem. So you can leverage the engineers love hard problems by explaining the complexity of certain problems and help them really understand how much impact they can make by solving this problem. And if there are certain problems that are not hard engineering wise, you got to bring it up a level and talk about the complex problem that you are trying to solve. So for example, on my team, we were working a lot of growth tactics and some of them are like, oh, send notifications. And for engineers like that wasn't very hard, especially there was a platform or a system to help them do it. But instead I helped them realize the bigger problem of how do we learn what growth tactics are going to work to get people excited about this interesting product that we we're building. Tip number seven, don't diminish their effort. There are times I've heard people on the team say to engineers, oh, well, that's an easy feature. Can't we just add that in into the roadmap mid quarter? <laughs> and I know engineers are steaming when they hear that from product managers or other people on the team. Engineering is complex. So seemingly simple features actually require a lot of complexity. Actually, I might even go to the lengths to say the more simple a feature is, the more technically complex it might be because the engineers build so much complexity in it to make it easier for users to use. So when you propose new features on the roadmap, be sensitive to the cost of it because when you're proposing these new features and saying, Oh, well, that's an easy feature. It's almost like paying a person the same rate, but they have to do twice the amount of work. Like, that's not fair. So never assume a feature is easy and never utter the words, oh, well, isn't that supposed to be an easy feature? Can't we just add that in and throw it in there? And don't you try to estimate how long it takes unless you've done engineering before. And even then engineers are not great at even estimating how long it'll take them, but always work with an engineer to assess how big, small, how long a feature is going to take. 
And you do this by making sure they understand the problem it's trying to solve and then explaining the hypothesis you're trying to test and how this feature is going to solve that problem. Tip number eight, to keep your engineers motivated, you want to understand their motivations. So some engineers are really driven to learn new technologies. They want to learn how to build an Android, which by the way, is really complex. Like I haven't even built an Android before, but it sucks. Some of them might want to learn a new programming language. Some of them want to drive impact to see a certain problem solved in the world. Or some want to achieve business results so that they can get it written in their performance cycle and get promoted. Or some just want to have fun with the team. Understand what are their core motivations and make sure you build that in as a product manager to ensure the team is proliferating that. And that is how you ensure engineers stay on the team, which is again, is really important. It is near impossible to build a product without engineers, no surprise, unless you've done engineering before. Product managers working with engineers is an extremely empowering collaboration because they basically are the ones helping bring the vision and helping craft the vision, but bringing it to life. So understanding ways that enable them to perform at their best is going to help you ensure your product gets success. Comment below, I'm curious, which other functions do you wanna hear of best practices on working with? Is it data science, product designers, content designers, product marketing managers? Let me know below and we'll create another video like this for the other roles. And I will see you guys later.